Now we're talking back in the action once again. Time to get back to work here tonight. It's, of course, Monday evening. It's April the 20th, 2020. My name is Joseph. And as always, welcome back to your nightly newsletter. Now, if you're here for the first time, it's great to have you with me because my job tonight is to find the best entry setups for tomorrow's trading session. And I get a jam-packed video in store for you tonight. The charts are all prepped up in the background. As you can see, we get some oil, some S&P, and of course, some gold in the video tonight. Got a lot to talk about. Got a big move down on oil. Got, I think, a hidden range there on the S&P. And it looks like those buyers on gold might be walking into a trap here tonight. We'll grab all the details here in a moment. I also want to talk about the calendar for this week. It's kind of a weird week we have going on this week. It's the it's the fourth week of the month. It's not the third week. It's not the last week of the month. We're kind of right in the kind of kind of the weird zone between the middle and the end of the month. Got a bunch of big news coming this week too, and I want to make sure you know the calendar for this week. So I got a great got a pretty good video for you guys and gals tonight. Lots to cover on the charts. Big news coming this week. We'll cover it all. I'm glad to see you with me. Before we jump into the video, though, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. I don't want you to miss all the good stuff we publish here every week on this nightly newsletter. So make sure you subscribe. And don't forget, if you have any questions about tonight's video, any questions at all, drop those questions in the comment section below. I'll be answering questions as we publish the video tonight. And how about some thumbs up here? If you tune in every evening, if you love this nightly newsletter, help support this channel by by hitting that thumbs up button for me. Always appreciate you guys and gals tuning in every evening around the closing bell. Well, let's not waste any more valuable time though. It's of course the first day of a new week. It's time to get back to work here. Let's kick off tonight's video though first by taking a look at the calendar here for tomorrow and for the rest of the week. Let's grab the economic news calendar here courtesy of Econo Day. And let's get this party started. Tomorrow, of course, is Tuesday. It's April the 20th. Uh, oh, sorry, April the 21st tomorrow. Uh, get some big news in the calendar for tomorrow, as you can notice here, right? This news, of course, tomorrow, at the uh, existing home sales number is at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Now, you know, like a lot of news right now, this would normally be a pretty big news report, but there's a lot of stuff going on here this week, which I want to make sure you're aware of. You know, we almost kind of have like this dark cloud, right, hanging over this week right now. It's not the third week of the month. You know, third week of the month, as we mentioned last week, is usually very, very volatile. And it's not the end of the month, right? Next week is the end of the month. So it's it's kind of this weird kind of, you know, in between. It's a full week. Uh, there's a lot of news here, but there's a bunch of stuff out there I think these markets are really waiting on. You know, for example, you know, everyone's talking about oil right now. Of course, the price of oil, uh, you know, will OPEC, you know, will they will they basically pull a rabbit out of their hat and find a way to kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, resolve this issue of there's zero demand for oil right now because, have, you know, more most of the world's on lockdown. You know, even if you're one of the best, uh, you know, states or countries, uh, you're barely getting out of lockdown right now. So demand of oil is very low. They've really got to find some magic tricks to pull out of their hat right now to get that demand back up or start really slashing production. We're kind of waiting to hear if OPEC will, uh, you know, again, pull something together here this week. It might surprise us this week. I wouldn't be surprised if we some we see some creative deal that really gets these markets moving. That is something we're watching here this week. How about, how about free money, right? Stimulus. Uh, the U.S., of course, uh, talking about more stimulus packages. Uh, we know that the uh, the payment protection program, they ran out of money last week, and they're trying to fund that again with some more U.S. stimulus. We heard from Capitol Hill today. They couldn't agree on anything in the Senate today. They'll talk again tomorrow. The minute we hear more about more U.S. stimulus or more European stimulus, you're going to see a big response from these markets. And of course, as we all are waiting on, I'm sure everyone's wondering when are they going to have this coordinated effort to reopen the economy. We heard about the beaches in Florida being reopened. We heard about places in Texas being reopened. We've heard about places in the United States. We've heard about uh, uh, spots uh, you know, down under. I know there are places in New Zealand who are talking about reopening. So there's a lot of places that are starting to show signs of life once again, right? It's not just 
the month of May around the corner, but it does look like spring is here. So we're definitely anticipating some more uh, headlines regarding some coordinated plans for reopening the market. So as we look at this week, boy, there's a lot on our radar. And it's not just it's not just the home sales number uh, tomorrow morning, right? 10 o'clock Eastern time, which is slated to be the most important news on our radar. The biggest thing right now is when will we hear from OPEC? When will we hear about more stimulus? Will it be tomorrow on Wednesday? I don't know. And just like you, I'm going to be getting to my desk tomorrow morning. I'll be prepping my charts, trading my plan. And the minute we hear more about this, we'll adjust, we'll react, and we'll trade with confidence. So tomorrow morning, don't forget, we're going to do this together. We got that big news tomorrow at 10 o'clock Eastern time. So I would definitely make sure if you could only trade for an hour tomorrow, 9.45 till 10.45 would definitely be that hour I would make sure you're at your desk tomorrow. We, of course, and every morning, we trade this stuff together from 8 a.m. to about 11.30 Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. I'll put all the membership information, by the way, to come out and trade it with us. I'll put all the information, by the way, in the description of this YouTube video. That way, if you don't want to go out there and brave these markets alone, it's much easier to look over my shoulder and do it there with me. We'll talk more about how to get access to the trade room here as we go, but all those links for you will be right in the description of this YouTube video. Now, you'll notice, get a lot more big news coming later on this week, but make sure you come back in tomorrow night's newsletter. And we'll We'll talk about how those will impact us once we know a little bit more about what we get from oil, stimulus, and reopening the economy. All right, we're looking good there. Let's not waste any more of our valuable time here. It is great to be back here with you guys on a Monday evening. Hope you had a fantastic, uh, albeit quarantined weekend. We're going on, what, five, six weeks now here in Los Angeles. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I'm getting a bit stir crazy. I'm sure most of you guys and gals are, but we'll get through it. We'll get through it. We're, we're, we're all in it together, as they say. Now, we get some oil, some S&P, and of course, some gold on the charts here for tonight. Everyone's talking about oil right now. I got I got a text message from my, my aunt for crying out loud today, right? Auntie, what are you, you're watching the price of oil too? That should tell you too, right? When you're, when, when your family members who have no business talking about the price of oil, when they're sending you ch right, chat messages going, what's up with oil? You know everybody is, is talking about this. I'm looking at my phone going, Really? You're watching this too? Okay. Okay, let's jump into oil here as well. All kidding aside, there's a lot of really big clues right now uh, on this oil. One of them is this market mistake. And we're going to talk a lot about this market mistake here right now because I think that market mistake just might be the biggest kind of hidden clue on this chart here tonight. First of all, what do we know about oil? We know that oil went one two, three legs down. Now, if you if you watch every evening, you know that most of the time when a market goes three legs in one session, the next day is going to be a range. So that is one big clue that you want to put in your notes for tomorrow. Keep your eyes open for some sort of range down here. Now, Obviously, if I knew where it was right now, I would tell you. But, you know, it's going to probably be somewhere right around this 2050, you know, maybe that 20 half to 21 half area. I don't know exactly where it is, but that is something on our radar here for tomorrow. We also know that when I was drawing this chart up here tonight, when I was prepping the chart here, the first thing I thought of was, was all right, we have a, a, a pretty classic, what I would call a one, two, three momentum move. Let's just mark up these highs, those lows, bring it to the highs. And I, you know, I'm like, I'm like, none of this fits very well. None of it really fit very well. And then I realized I put these two things together. The one was these two, le right, three legs down to that measured move. And look what happened here. See how they sat at the measured move? Then they slam lower. They come right back up and they hold it above the measured move. Okay, that was one big clue. Then I couldn't quite get this channel it just it just didn't make any just didn't make a lot of sense. This didn't fit very well down. It just didn't fit as well as I was hoping for. Then I saw these little guys right there. Those little wicks. And I thought, oh my goodness, it's a market mistake. 
that's what this is. It's a market mistake, right? It's not a. It's not the channel that you that I thought it was. It's not the more aggressive channel, and that's why it didn't fit as well. That's why I didn't get all the fit that I was thinking. You know, bottom line here is this is one of those. This is one of those times where you can tell. It's almost like it's almost like somebody. It's almost like at the low of that channel and the measured move, somebody meant to sell 10 contracts, but instead they sold 10 thousand contracts right you were you were you know uh, there, there are lots of ways but I call it a market mistake right it's almost like the market said right it's almost like it went through that low and you can tell those wicks right there if I if I look at those wicks you can see the wick right there the wick right there that's the giveaway and then when I noticed that oh it also did this to the measured move as well the, the key was when I saw these two wicks with the measured move, okay, it's a it's a market mistake. Now, uh, whenever you see a market mistake, you always think this pendulum will swing back in the other direction. It's like if you sneak up on somebody and you surprise them. What's going to happen, right? They're going to respond. They're going to, you know, their instinct is, is to respond with the force back in the other direction. So if you think about this thing, the pendulum kind of overswings down. I wouldn't be surprised if it overswings back up in the other direction here. And that's where I'm starting to think that this, you know, what might have been a market mistake is probably going to lead to a little bit of a swing higher. Now, knowing all of that, I know that's a little bit long-winded of an explanation, but what this does is this helps to at least define for me. It's the most important thing is I am not looking for this aggressive short off that high right now. That's not the trade I'm looking for right now. And that was the big thing here. I'm looking at this going, why aren't we down there right now? Right? If with it, if it was this strong, why are we not sitting at these lows right now? That's what should have happened. I mean, when you see this much strength going lower here. And you can easily line up those lows with that high. What am I missing here right now? Why are bears not, well, again, why are we not sitting down here? It's because of the market mistake. So now I know, and again, you'll, I don't think you'll have, I don't think you'll be able to find the term market mistake at, you know, investopedia.com. I don't think that's going to be where, the, where you find that. It's kind of my way of saying it looks like the market went, oh, shoot we overdid this. Let's correct now and go back in the direction. So now I'm thinking, okay, let's now think about where can I get short assuming this pendulum swings back in the other direction. We already know now where the correct channel is. I'm going to mark up that high. I'm going to try to sell off of that high. Okay, now we'll talk about this in a moment because this is a very wide channel and wide channels tell me what? Momentum. And momentum tells me what? nested, right? We'll talk about that in a moment here. Now, another thing I like about this is I can draw that trend line up off that low or the low to lows. We don't see these very often on oil. We see these all the time on gold, if you recall, right? These are really great levels of resistance. And then you'll also notice too, bounce, 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 a great prior support level that we can also use here as resistance as well. So a very long-winded explanation. I hope that made sense. I, I, I get, I get kind of giddy when I discover stuff like that. I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a nerd like that with this with technical analysis. It, it does well for trading, obviously, being passionate about this type of stuff. If you're passionate about technical analysis as well, make sure you hit that thumbs up button for me, right? Drop me a comment in the comment section below if you saw that mark mistake as well here today but now let's talk about how we can how we can sell up off of that high one thing I'm very concerned about is is as we go higher here I've got that measured move now staring me right in the face and it's very obvious that uh, it's very obvious that that's where they really wanted to be so if I want to be a seller off this high I need to find some way to get short without selling into support now if you watch my newsletter quite a bit here, my favorite way to do this is with what we call a trap setup. And I've been looking for basically, since we know we have some momentum going right for the bulls here right now, if I zoom in 
a little bit closer on this chart. Now that you kind of know the big picture on this, I know where I want to be selling. I know we're bearish. I don't think anybody can look at this chart right now and say, let's buy this, right? Uh, and we talked about this last week, right? Just last week, I said, this, this can keep going lower. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened here today. So I do want to be a seller up here. But as we go up into that battle zone now, up into that area of resistance, I've got to worry about this rising support. So as the moving average comes over, one, I have to anticipate buyers with this momentum at their back. Because remember, that pendulum will swing from underneath to overhead here. As that pendulum swings, the buyers, they're going to start thinking this thing's turned, you know, like they did earlier this morning, right? They're going to start thinking, okay, this is the bounce we've all been waiting for here. And they're going to try to get it once and try it twice. And ideally here, I want that trap. This is where the money is. This is where the money is. The money will be in traps on this for tomorrow morning. Because again, we want to make sure we let those buyers try a couple times here. Because again, this momentum will start to swing back. Again, the kind of the pendulum swing that comes with a market mistake. And most importantly, we have that level of support there. And that level of support tells me I've got to be very careful selling into that area of support. And my favorite way to do that is with a trap. Now, we may see this pendulum really swing, right? We may see the amount underneath, the amount above. So if we do see this thing really jump, the same thing will apply, but I'm not going to need as much of a trap on this now. What I want to do is, is I still want to wait for, as we pull back, buyers try once, buyers try twice. And once I can get those buyers trying again underneath the moving average, again, if we do really pop here, right, wait for those buyers now coming back, let them try once, let them try twice. I'm not going to need as much of a trap as long as I can get this thing up above the high of that channel because then I can still get a nice strong signal. I can get my one to one without having to worry about having to sell into that low. So two patterns here I'm watching for as we go. One is we call it two try trap pattern or trap pattern. The other would be as we go higher, a nested failure pattern. They both use the same basic principles. One of course requires to get a trap because we don't want to sell too low right? That is a very important part. Now, you might be wondering, what's the plan if this thing really jumps? Can I buy it up here? You can, but you got to be careful because, well, in, in case you haven't, in, in, in case you missed it, this has been a little bit of a problem here, right, with the price of oil. So if you want to be a buyer on this, you really got to be careful being a buyer. What's the best thing we can do to get a reversal? A, a Yes, a one, two, three reversal. A strong move up, pull back to the moving average, and strong move off the moving average. If I can get these buyers to grab that pullback and run with it, now I'm good to go. Now this market mistake has gone from being just a pullback to now a full-blown one, two, three reversal. Now, how do we trade a reversal? We definitely don't try to predict it. We then mark up that high mark up that new low. I always try to find the lows down here. I don't I don't always look for the low off that prior swing. I always like to find kind of that bigger low, something not a lot of people are looking for, and then I look for that pullback. The first pullback is always the best, right? Just like that first squeeze of orange juice, right? The first squeeze of the lime, the first right squeeze of olive oil, right? It's the best always, right? That's the first pullback off that low. I call these one, two, three three reversals into hidden channel pullbacks. That's how I want to trade that reversal. Now remember, tomorrow morning, we'll be looking for these traps, these failures, these reversals together in our trade room. If you can't be there with me, the next best thing is to grab our free trading classes. We got a great free course. I'll put a link up there for you in the upper right hand corner. Grab that free course. Learn my four favorite entry patterns learn my three-step strategy, and get hundreds of examples of how we apply that strategy to our favorite futures markets. Again, the best place is to do it with me tomorrow. If you're not with me tomorrow, though, that's the next best option. So now we know, grab the free course, and again, I'll put all the links I'm talking about tonight in the description 
of this video. Now, don't forget the possible sideways range here. Okay, there's that there's that variable here as well, right? So what if we start going sideways? What if we don't get up inside that cell zone? What if we sink back down in and we start going sideways here? We do anticipate some sort of range. And anytime I have a range, what do you think? Buy low, sell high, focus on failures, and avoid the middle, right? So we know we're bearish. There's no doubt about that. In a bear market, when we go into a range, I want to find some resistance levels overhead. I know a couple of them. One up at 21.89, trend line up overhead, hidden channel overhead, right? We know there's plenty of resistance up overhead. That ain't the problem. All we need right now is to wait for if we get that range then we start looking to pick those tops. Now, how do we pick the tops? We wait for, eventually, the bears will run out of bullets. I would say run out of gas, but that will be way too convenient of a joke for this chart. The bottom line, though, is wait for that pullback. Wait for those buyers to think this is a reversal. Let them, right, let them wrap that rope right around their neck, around the moving average, and we'll sell right into their stop losses. Anytime we have a range market, I just simply look for breakout pullback failures. Buy low, sell high, focus on failures. Focus on those times where you get those pops, Right? Eventually, those bears will run out of bullets. They'll try, right? The buyers will think this market, oh, this is finally our pop, right? They'll try, they'll, they'll try to buy that pullback, right? The fear of missing out. The problem is this market might not be done going lower here yet. Remember, it's important to remember that when we rolled over on Friday, we rolled over from the 0520 contract. What was the price on Friday morning for the rollover? It was at $18. Okay, we then rolled over to the 0620 contract last Friday to $24. Who, who could have possibly seen this big drop coming? And if I was to guess right now, where do you think this market might keep going to? I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say it might just fill that, that gap right between the 520 contract when it rolled last week and the 620 contract. We talked about this in our trade room. It was almost a guaranteed we got a big drop here today. We just didn't know it'd be this insanely big. So the bottom line is there's a big old bullseye down there for 18 bucks a barrel. There's no way of knowing if this is the bottom here yet. But every time they try to poke their heads above that high though, I will be looking for those buyer failures to sell right back down in. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, Joe, so how do we get to that $18 a barrel area? We have to see some proof. Look at that cute little guy down there, right? That cuddly number. It looks so it looks so easy right now. The problem is, if they wanted it, they would have gotten there today, right? It, it, it went, what, almost five bucks today. They would have got there today if they wanted it. We need to see either some more stimulus, right? Uh, you know, I mentioned last week that that OPEC deal would probably quickly fall apart and this thing would keep tumbling. Will we hear some more you know, delays on any deal tomorrow? That may be a catalyst for us as well. But right now, though, I've got to assume that this is a major level of support. So I can't sell down here. What are some options to get short? One option is one, two, three, breakout. This is the same reversal pattern, right? A strong move down, that's always the first clue. Hold a pull back to the moving average and jump. If you can show me some strength off of that moving average, now I know I can trust you below that market mistake. I can mark up that low. Again, I always like to go out to the bigger high and mark up that high, and now I can look for that sell off the high. Again, the first test of that channel is a red hot setup. And just so you know, if I was to zoom in on that area, just kind of imagine kind of zooming in on that area here, a lot of times what happens is, is this ends up being a buyer failure pattern into a seller pullback. That little combination setup we talk about here quite a bit, right? 
buyers get caught above the moving average and then bears come in and sell it on the pullback so when I you know when, when I talk about selling off the high of that channel I'm not just saying hit the sell button right I don't, I don't that it's not that it's not that simple it's pretty easy but it's not that simple I want to look for one of my entry setups a buyer failure right or a seller pullback in and around that moving average and again you can learn all the details of those failure patterns in the free course I keep mentioning in the upper right hand corner now knowing that what else can we do now sometimes what happens is the market just runs it pulls back off the moving average and it just it just runs right it just collapses as it goes if that happens like we saw like, like, like we saw a lot of today here I like to look for what I call a two try trap pattern when you get a real strong bear run like this again on the way down to that 18 that's where you can start looking for and usually the giveaway on this is it's a shallow pullback it doesn't pull back to the moving average and then you get that lower low a lower low combined with that shallow pullback yeah now you know to try trap mark up the channel just try to find some hidden channel there to combine with it target of course down to that 18 and change from there again that rollover last week sent this thing tumbling today it's got a lot more reason to want to go lower we got to wait here right now for a little bit more information that market mistake really put us in a really tough position because this measured move here is going to be a support level right looking for traps as we go up if we really pop those nested or maybe this market mistake it could Right? I mean, we may look back on this and say this market mistake was the last bit of that move, almost like an exhaustion, right? Almost like a, uh, what do they call that? Oh, I can't, I can't recall the name. The name escapes me right now. But, you know, almost like an exhaustion move, right? It exhausts at that low, right? And then reverse, we go. If it does reverse, mark it up, mark it up, and we'll buy off that low. We will only know once we have more information here uh, in the overnight session. Let's keep moving here. Oil is looking great. I love that market mistake example. We don't see them that often. I'm so glad we get a chance to show you how that works here today. Over on the S&P here right now. Now, the S&P, what do we know about the S&P? We know we're bearish. That is for sure. But there's one thing that really stands out on this on this chart, and that is look at the way the market keeps making lower lows right now. Right? Go back in time on this. Again, we know we're bearish. We know we're kind of stair stepping its way down. And uh, just just kind of look at how they're making lower lows right now. They make a lower low here, and what happens? Big, big profit taking. Right? They make a lower low here, and what happens? Well, we don't know yet, but we do know, though, that if history repeats itself, we might be in store here for a pretty big rally off of these lows. So i got to be careful here right now. Uh, I'm thinking this might be seen as a double bottom. You know, you'll notice here it's not nearly as much. I know they're very similar, and you know we shouldn't take things. You know, we're not looking for. You know, we're not, we're not literally saying double bottoms here, but you can definitely tell the S and P has a bit lower low there than we're seeing right now. So it does appear that this market may be weakening as we are moving lower. Now, again, we know we're bearish, but anytime I see a double bottom like this, this is a big concern. Um, what what does a double bottom tell me? A double bottom tells me, uh, well, first of all, this potentially a range here. And I think that's the biggest thing. This big, you know, biggest clue I see right now is we're not getting we're not getting very much momentum through these lows, right? You know, remember, you know, example like the, like 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 the uh, like the oil today, right? Oil just, I mean, tumbling, tumbling, tumbling. That that's a very aggressive market, right? You got to get aggressive with moves like that. But when a market is barely making those bounce, bounce, right? I mean, they're barely making those lower lows right now. You got to be careful. You got to make sure you're not getting too aggressive. Make sure you're looking for those bounces and then selling into them as we go back down. You cannot get very aggressive on a market that we're seeing right now in the S&P, right? On a market like oil, put your helmet on, right? Strap yourself in and, and get in, right? That's the market what we saw today. On a market like the S&P right now, the S&P is not that market, right? They're bouncing pretty heavily off of those lows. And again, it looks like a, a straight double bottom at this low so I'm thinking this might be one big range here and that's where I started thinking okay maybe this is a big range 
And then once I put that on my chart, I said, oh no, it's right here. That's what the range is, right? We just don't quite see it just yet. What's happening is that range, of course, from last week, price went up, they failed back in, they tried again, they failed back in, and that would explain why they're struggling to get through these lows. It's not a, it, it, it is a bearish momentum, but we're, we're kind of stuck inside of a range right now. You'll notice I'm measuring these legs off the high, one, two, three legs down. That is an important level of support, but I want to clean these things off here so you can kind of see some more here that I'm doing. I'm also lining up these lows up to these highs, and it ain't pretty, but it looks like that's our channel. So we know we're bearish. We know we're bouncing off these lows, bouncing off these lows. And I'm anticipating a, another bounce here again. And that's where I'm thinking we should be looking for the sell. So we got two big clues. Again, we know we're bearish. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but we don't know, though, is, is how important this range will be here for tomorrow. You know, will they go back in and get stuck inside that range for a while? Or will, they just, or will this thing just, you know, run, you know, like, like this one did? You know, will it ignore that range and blow right through it? Uh, or will we go back up into that trading range and sit for a while? That is a very big variable that I want to make sure I'm ready here for tomorrow. Uh, I also want to be ready because remember, uh, you know, a, a lot of what we're seeing right now is a byproduct of the price of oil. You know, oil's a big industry around the world. You've had for the past 50, 60 years, most, you know, uh, most developed economies have relied on the price of oil to base everything off of. Uh, here in the U.S., I mean, you could arguably say our oil industry here is a, is, is a very big chunk of our economy. So if, if this price of oil keeps on getting dragged lower, you're going to probably see the S&P get dragged lower. And if that's the case, now we're going to break this cycle. Now we're going to break the cycle of these bounces. If they keep going lower here, we have a pretty nice open space down here below us before we start worrying about that next area of support. So in my opinion, this is where the bears can really make some pretty easy profit tomorrow if we can get some proof here going lower. If we don't, though, I've got to focus on kind of picking these tops up here around the top of the range, around the top of that channel. So, you know, again, kind of kind of providing some 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 in-depth understanding to why I'm thinking this. Uh, you can you can see now kind of what my plan looks like right now. Uh, if we go lower, I've got kind of a, and I, I put this channel on here because I want to show you kind of what I'm looking for. If this goes lower here, right? So if we if we make a run lower now, now it's on, right? Now we have an aggressive trend. Now I can start looking for those channels and I can start selling off those channel tops. But I can't do that right now. If I try to go in and try to sell off that channel right now, again, it, unless something changes, you know, there, we could, but it doesn't fit what's happened here recently. So we'd have to have, well, either you'd have to have a crystal ball to know that this one would hold, or you're just gambling, right? And you could be gambling. I mean, you know, between, you know, you're, you're, you're more than welcome to, to lose your money however you want. Uh, that would be a very, a very aggressive trade there. Uh, you'd have to have some sort of insider information or know something most of us don't. Uh, and you might. So, you know, if you do, good for you. But that, for the most of us, we can't really assume that's going to work very well. We have to assume we either go up into that range or we go through that range. And that obviously now makes for a pretty, a pretty remarkable move higher here. And and we got to use like a nested pattern, right, to get short off of that. So the plan at this point is um, if we go lower, it's a pretty easy plan if we go lower here. I mean, after all, if we can get this thing going lower here now and really get this move running, I can mark up those lows. I can mark up my big high. I can wait to get up around those highs. That will usually put me just above the moving average. And I can look for a buyer failure into seller pullback on the way down. Okay, and again, I cover these patterns in pretty good detail in that free course that I mentioned earlier, along with drawing these types of channels correctly, right? I don't draw my channels the way you would normally learn to draw them. We draw them kind of the way they work best in today's price action. So that's one way to look at it there, right? It will be a kind of a, a breakdown of this area and then find that new channel. Now, you know, keep in mind too, 
I mean, again, you know, like I said earlier, it's all, it all kind of hinges on oil right now. If this thing really takes a bath, right, if it really starts to dump, right, these big red candles, every time we see a green candle, we see sellers coming in, right? If you see that type of price action as we go lower, keep your eyes open for that to try trap. What that will be is, again, it'll be a shallow pullback that won't pull back to the moving average. That's 99% of the giveaway, a lower low in price. At that point now, I'm marking up that high, looking for a trap above that high. And again, I always would encourage you to line up that level with some level of resistance. And again, targets on this down at that 27 55 area, which is just basically that range, right, from earlier on in the month, right, half of the month there on the uh, uh, on the S&P. So we know how I want to get short as we go lower. Do I dare buy this market off this low? You could buy this with a crown reversal. You've got that measured move down there, obviously. Again, we talked about the measured move earlier. So could you buy off this low? You could, but you'd have to really be patient. Wait for the measured move. Wait for the bears to try once to sell into it. They would probably hold off that trend line, I would imagine, the low there. See them try again. And then because you're going so firmly against this momentum, you're going to really want that trap, right? That would be your crown reversal pattern. These are uh, more advanced patterns, and they're definitely something that uh, not a lot of rookie traders do correctly because rookies don't have that discipline and that patience yet. You know, these types of patterns could take an hour to set up. They could also take 10 minutes. You really want to wait patiently. You know, I, I always use the analogy of trying to turn one of those big battleships, right? If, if all of this momentum, right, if all this momentum is going lower and you're trying to be a buyer on this, yeah, I realize that every once in a while you'll see these V bottoms, but it's very difficult to tell a V bottom from a reversal, like, you know, a crown reversal. It's very difficult to predict, right, when you're going to get those V bottoms here. Uh, most of us are not going to be able to catch enough of those to make it worth our while. I never try to predict those V bottoms. I always wait for the bears to kind of dig their own graves, so to speak, with one try, two try, let them get it out of their system, and then buy off of those lows. A much more reliable to kind of, quote, unquote, pick those bottoms. Now, speaking of picking bottoms, which I never recommend, unless, of course, you've got gloves on. You want to go back up into that range here. Now, as we go higher, right, as we go higher here, keep in mind there's two types of pullbacks right now. One pullback is like this. The other one is the one you got to be worried about or the one you got to pay attention to. If we go up into the range here and we get stuck inside this range, again, it looks like there's a sneaky range in there. If we get wrapped up inside that range now, now just keep your eyes on that sell zone overhead and what's the best of a pattern to sell above a range? A buyer failure. We wait for the breakout higher. We wait for those buyers now to try to buy the pullback. And we sell into their stop losses. Okay? It's, it's, just, it's, it's, a, it's a straight up failure pattern. Okay? Buyer failure pattern above the top of a trading range. The range is the magnet. Leave a runner down to those lows. But what if we run, right? What if it really, you know, again, what if we get something like this where the market runs all the way up, which if history repeats itself, looks very likely. Now what do we do? Now we want to embrace momentum now. We want to be able to right, uh, uh, absorb the momentum. The buyers are not going to give up without a fight. And so at this point now, you want to give them once, you want to give them twice, and then sell that sucker back down from there. Right, and you'll see it. You'll see as they pull back, the buyers will come in, they'll try once, right? The buyers will come in, they'll try twice. This is a very slow time frame, obviously, so it's difficult to see these on a faster time frame. It'll be very clear. We go up, the buyers try once, the buyers try twice, and we're selling it back down into that range. That's the pattern we're looking for if we just slice right back up into that trading range or back up through that range. Now, how do we buy this thing as it goes higher? This is where you've got to be careful. You always want to know where the objective is before you trade. If we do go higher, we get the weekend gap, which has become very common over the last few weeks. This is the closing price of Friday. It's basically Friday's close, right? If there is a gap between Friday's close and Sunday's open, 
Okay, what time do they close on Friday? They close at 5 p.m. on Friday, and they open, what, 6 p.m. on Sunday for trading in Asia. Okay, we then go all the way through Asia, into Europe, and then, of course, over to the U.S., so they close at 5 o'clock. So that level, first of all, 28.69, that is a major important level to keep in mind. Another here is that big top overhead, which... In all honesty, we talked about false tops last week. That could easily be seen as a false top up there. And if you were to kind of right project this area up top there, if I can grab that battle zone here, that whole area up there could easily be seen as kind of like a little resistance area up there. In fact, you could probably even go even further off that ladder and say that's your false top, right? Just like that. We talk about false tops, right? You, you can't just use the main top. Because as they go once, they go twice, they go three times, right? All that whole area is probably going to be seen as resistance and buyers are not going to want to buy into it. The moral of the story here, guys and gals, is that if we get this thing to make a strong run higher, if they can get that strong run higher, if they can get that pullback and they hold that one, two, three reversal, remember, that's the key, right? They've got to get up and hold it. They aren't able to hold it. We talked about this, right? In order for us to get a reversal, it's not enough to just get a big pullback. Big pullbacks in environments like these don't usually hold. You have to embrace momentum and buy and sell into stops, but a lot of times they're not going to hold. We have to wait for those buyers to prove to us they can hold. Then I'm going to mark up that high. I'm going to mark up that big low and start looking for that buy off the low. Now, this is where we've got to be careful because we don't know, you know, if the if the market runs big time and runs up, this is a very different type of right environment. If I'm buying way up here now off the low of that channel, I've got to be thinking about traps, right? I've got to be thinking about get a deeper pullback, get bears trying once, bears trying twice, traps off of that low. I've got to be thinking traps to avoid buying high. If we see this thing do something like this where it runs a little bit right, a little bit shallower and then jumps up and goes up from there, okay, now we're on a different level playing field now, right? Now we're on a different playing field. Now I can use that channel now. I can be a lot more I can be a lot more aggressive now, right? Buying off of that low because I haven't reached the objective yet. So be aware, even if we do get that one, two, three reversal, it's not a guarantee the same type of entry pattern off the low of that channel. I always want to buy that first test, as I said, right? Like that first squeeze of orange juice, right? I always want to buy that first test off the low of the channel, but I don't want to do it if it's right up into those overhead highs. So please make sure you're careful on those reversals. I wonder though, if by the end of the day tomorrow, if we're sitting down around that 2750 area and we can thank the oil price, right, for, for, for dragging us down right along with them. That may definitely be in the cards here for tomorrow. No matter what though, Make sure you come out and join me tomorrow, right? Tomorrow morning in the trade room, grab those links, right? Get them registered for tomorrow. I do not want you to miss all this great trading price action right now. Let's wrap it up tonight here on the gold. Gold has its own set of curveballs right now. What do we know about gold here? We know the gold is seriously bearish. We know that is for sure. Anytime I have a bear market like this, I always want to sell up at a level of resistance. Uh, with that, I also know I had a range here for most of the day today. Now, this trading range with double tops and double bottoms and flattening moving averages, anytime we see a range like this, what do we do? We take the size of that range, we copy and paste it up, and we know that this is where we want to be selling going back down into that trading range right? Makes sense? Like we said earlier, whenever a market is bearish into a range, we focus on buyer failures, right? Off of, you know, above, above that range. Now, you can also see though, that if I zoom this out a little bit further, this is a classic one, two, three momentum move. It is a one, two, big three-legged move down. I'm marking up that low, I'm bringing it up around that high. And you can see a little high right there, right? Okay, so we go we go big move down, pull back, 
Another big leg lower here. I'm marking up that low. I'm marking up my high. And this is why I said in the introduction, it looks like these buyers might be walking right into a trap right now. Because it definitely feels like the buyers have some momentum at their back. But boy, oh boy, you look at the chart on this, you can easily see there is a lot of resistance here, right? That whole area there acted as support. It's held, it's held as, as resistance there before a couple times. So we know that's gonna be an important level overhead. I've got this area overhead as well off the top of that channel. And of course, at the same time here, we've got that range. And that range now will act as a magnet. So again, I think it's pretty easy to see that we're overall bearish. We know we've got the range. The range gives me resistance. We know we've got a one, two, three momentum move. That's giving me levels of resistance as well. And I've got these bulls. That's the only concern I have here right now on this gold is I have the bulls who definitely look like they've got a little bit right in the big picture here in the faster time frame. It was a nice reversal there right on gold this morning. In the bigger picture though, yes, they did get that one, two, three breakout. And so you've got to be thinking these buyers are probably going to be giving this a couple tries here. So as we pull back here, I'm thinking one, I'm thinking two and sell back down in. Again, I want to be a seller, but I've got those bulls who have momentum on their side. And with that momentum now, I want to let them kind of wrap the rope right around their neck here. That's going to be the trick here for being a buyer here on gold. I'm waiting for those buyers right now. Oh, sorry, to be a seller on gold, let's just say, right? So sellers looking for a nested failure. As we pull back here right now, one try, two try, and back down, a nested failure here for those buyers. Again, or for, sorry, excuse me, for the sellers. Because we have all this momentum right now, we try to go higher, one, two, and sell back down, letting those buyers wrap the rope around their neck. If we dump back down into that trading range, we know that's the magnet. Right? We know there's that magnet there. If we end up back inside of that range here tomorrow, or if we just simply slide back into that range here, you know it's a range. What do we do with the range? We wait to get up. We wait to sell into those buyer pullback failures. We sell into their stop losses, right? So a, basically a failure pattern off of that high. If the market really races lower, if it really races into a one, two, three pullback now, if it blows those lows, if it says what range, right? It just runs right through it. Now we mark up that low, mark up that high, and now we know where we want to be a seller off of that high. Again, this would be if we ignore that trading range, all right? Now, as far as buyers go, buyers have this right now on a silver platter because they've already got that big leg up. All they have to do is hold this and run. If they can hold this pullback and run now, this blows my theory right out of the water. I can now mark up that new high, right? Find my hidden channel now, and I'm buying off the low of that channel. Now, you'll notice that's gonna be a pretty wide channel, and you might not wanna use that one. So what you might wanna do is, if we see a one, two, three, use a new channel. Right, so again, we go up, we hold it, we jump, mark up the high, mark up that low. That would be a much more realistic channel to use than having to use the big one, two, three. Because let's face it, if the buyers take control of this market, do you really think they're going to pull all the way back to that low? It just seems unlikely. It seems unlikely. If the buyers can take this, I know exactly where they're going to want to go. They're going to want to go right back into that big juicy range up around 1750. You don't need some special volume profiling tool to see that one. You can see that triangle a mile away right there. It's a big old bullseye at 1750 for those buyers here tomorrow. No extra indicators needed to know where that is if you know how to read a chart. So as we look at this chart here, Again, uh, I'm thinking we go one, two, three, 
again, one, two, three, reversal, one, two, three, breakout, whatever you want to call this, right? I want to see proof here. That's the most important thing. Mark up that high, mark up that low, and we're buying off of that low. Or, as I always say, if this thing starts to really rip, right? If this thing really rips higher, keep your eyes open for that, remember what it was again? The giveaway. The giveaway is nine times out of 10, the giveaway is, is that no pullback. It's a shallow pullback. It won't pull back to the moving average. Once I set that higher high, now mark up that low and trap, 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 trap. Look for that trap. Again, try to find that level of support. Combined level of support, 1750 is where we're thinking about going next. All right, guys? So right now to be a seller, do we see the one, the two, and the nested embracing momentum for the, for the bulls but selling into stops? Again, once we see those buyers, right, once they try once, they try twice, now we know where stops are. We know exactly where their pain is. Now we know where buyers go, uncle, 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 I shouldn't have gone against a trend. And they sell their way out of their positions. That is a very effective way to look at it. Or do we run back into the range, right? Get that pullback, get those buyers to foolishly think it's a reversal, sell into those stops. Or again, do they ignore this? Do they one, two, three, big run down, mark that low, mark that high, sell off of that high? Because as I mentioned earlier, right, we got that low down there at that 1670 area, right, to get that low retested. So we got plenty of space. Just got to make sure we get some momentum here for those bears. I'll tell you, tomorrow and the rest of this week has a ton of potential. A lot of big news that we haven't even heard of yet, right? A lot of big news kind of waiting in the wings. And don't forget, tomorrow morning, we're going to do it together with all of our advanced members. Being an advanced member gives you lifetime access to our trade room, all the video courses, all the tools and indicators. I'll put, again, all the membership information for you. I'll put a link for you right below this video. If you're on the blog, it's Sideways Mark. It's a big blue button there to get registered. If you're on the YouTube channel right now, it's in the description of this YouTube video. So get registered. Come out and join me tomorrow morning and every morning at the opening bell. Don't be afraid to call me in the office. Don't let my ugly mug all right, distract you from there, right? Call that toll-free phone number. I'd be more than happy to walk you through all the different flexible options we have right now and help you get register for tomorrow morning's trading session don't be afraid to use that live support tool i can i can help with chat answer questions there and as always if membership isn't quite right for you make sure you grab our free trading courses as part of our free trial and see how great this strategy is i think you'll find that three-step strategy is really easy to learn and extremely reliable we've been trading every day for over 10 years in our trade room guys and gals that's it for me have a wonderful rest of your monday evening rest up we'll see you guys tomorrow if i don't see you tomorrow in the trade room come back and see me again tomorrow night on the next edition of our nightly newsletter as always be well out there be nice to each other will you and be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.